How's it going, everybody? The stream has begun. And we're going to start with the hair reveal. Now, I got my hair, got my hair did, and I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, I've been talking about it for a while. Now, the light is not the best. So you're not, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. And I'm going to be putting up pictures uh, eventually. But, <laughs> here we go. Bang. <laughs> See, that light's like in the way. Wow. Awesome or awesomest? Yeah. It's like um it's like a really dark pink or a really light purple. I don't know, uh, it's like magenta y also. It's a sweet, sweet color. It's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, my little cartoon doesn't match anymore. I'll have to draw another one. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Glad you guys enjoyed it. Sadly, uh, my hair is too awesome to wear my Adventure Time hat anymore. But it's okay. It had it had a good run. So let's jump right into the spoilers. We uh, tried to do blue yesterday, and it didn't really work. I was pretty tired, so like I messed a bunch of stuff up. And then, before I even finished the spoilers, the stream exploded, and I couldn't get it back up. So I'm just going to start over. I'm just going to do all of blue right now. And then, on stream, we're going to do a draft. And then after that, I'm going to do black. So... Let's go into blue. If you would like. Now, before yesterday, I had barely seen any of these cards, if not and if not all of it uh being brand new to me. But uh, these are no longer my initial, initial, initial reactions, because, like I said, I did about half the set yesterday, or half the colors. I'm sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> I did half of blue yesterday, so half of today is not going to be brand new, but, to me, that is, but, um, I'll still, like, give my thoughts and what my initial reactions were, I guess, and then uh, the last few cards I've not seen. So, Orful Dodge, I did uh, the obvious comparison to Distortion Strike. Uh, it doesn't have the pump, and you have to pay another mana, but you can do it whenever. It's not, you don't have to do it in two successive turns. Um, it's a cool card for, like, blue-green uh, in limited. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. I am almost exclusively going to talk about limited because n almost all the cards are going to be only impactful in limited. If something's going to make the jump to constructed, then I'll mention it. But otherwise, I'm talking about limited. Specifically draft, but the seal is pretty much the same uh, for the most part. So, yeah, just just a heads up. Uh, when I say that it's a cool card in blue-green, I'm obviously talking about the limited archetype. Um, but Gather of Wills, I talked a lot yesterday about how mind controls work in limited. They're just super, super powerful, and... 
I think that doing them in creative ways like this is a lot better than just like five mana, you gain control of it, period. Uh, I don't think that that's like an interesting card at all, and I don't think it's really healthy for a limited environment to have something like that at common or at uncommon. So this is a mythic, and it does it in, uh, in a creative way. So I, I like this type of card uh, a lot more from a design perspective. Also, note that it doesn't say uh, for as long as you control the Gather of Wills like Olivia does. So you keep all your guys, all the guys you steal, which is pretty awesome. And also, the flavor text is super, super badass. Bone to Ash. All right. This card I went on a rant uh, about yesterday, and I'm going to do it again right now. I absolutely love that this card exists. I absolutely love it. And I cannot stand the ignorance of the people that are like, that this is stupid and that Wizards is stupid for printing this because exclude is one cheaper and dismiss can counter anything. What were they thinking? That, like, those are good things. Exclude and dismiss both saw extensive constructed play. They were both extremely good. This, four, two, and two blue, is what this ability should cost. And this ability should cost this much. Uh, this is a good, a good balance. And to say a card is bad or you don't like it because it's worse than another card is horrible from a, a design perspective because power creep is a real thing and if you don't believe it just look at how much better cards are now than they were even four years ago um it, it's it's insane how much better cards are uh at just about every type of card has improved drastically in a short amount of time that's scary that's not good for magic uh, dialing back the power level is definitely important, and I think that this is uh, a, a good card to do it with. Uh, I'm definitely... A lot of people were saying that... Um, I did this rant on stream yesterday, too. A lot of people were saying that they hated this set. They were like, oh, this set's so stupid, and I was like... When I set, told the stream that I was going to be reviewing the set, they were like, Psh, don't bother, or like, oh, it'll make your eyes bleed, it's so horrible. Um, I don't understand that attitude. Uh, first of all, I don't think that that's true from what I've seen, you know, one and a half colors. Um, and secondly, people are mistaking a low power level for a bad set. Uh, Innistrad had a decently low power level compared to other sets in the past, and that's a good thing. The limited environment in Innistrad is more... is It's a better limited environment than there has been for years. And... The fact that the power level has been dialed back has a lot to do with that. Uh, the, to, to say a set is bad because not all the cards are awesome, I don't want all my cards to be awesome. The analogy I used the other day was, imagine playing chess where all of your pieces are queens. That's, that's not chess, that's just nonsense. And I feel like that's what people... Uh, are pushing towards when they say that like a card is stupid or a set is bad because it's worse because it has a lower power level a lower power level is a good thing it's good for the game and it's good for the longevity of the game and it, it's something that should be celebrated not scorned now this card 
uh, is pretty awesome flavorfully. The art is awesome. It's got a lot of words. I, I don't see it really having a lot of application besides, you know, casual players. But it, it's it's cool and it's going to be useful to uh, to play around with. Like it'll be a fun fun card to build around. Chant, I like this card. I think that um, minus 13 is pretty funny, but like I like effects like this, sort of Swidow removal, and the fact that it costs 3 is really good. 3 is, what I talked about the other day was, 3 for a card like this is not the difference between 2 and 3. Like, this costing 2 and 3 is not the difference between 2 and 3, because it's not... You're not going to play this on turn 2 or 3 either, or anyway. So, what you do is you take, like, the normal cost of a set, or, uh, or the average cost... It, it, not average, but the, the mean cost, I guess, in a limited environment. So, like, this set, it's probably 3, and... Like, Zendikar was 2, in Core Set it's 4, etc. And you add it to that. So, for this set, uh, I don't know about you guys, but in Draft I always end up with a ton of 3 drops, and then a few 2 drops, and a handful of 4 drops, and then like a couple 5s and a couple 6s. So, the difference between 2 and 3 on this card isn't the difference between 2 and 3, it's the difference between, since you're going to have three drops, between five and six. Does that make sense? I, I know that was kind of like a weird rant, but just something I was thinking about. Chill of Foreboding. This is uh, probably not going to make a huge impact. Eight is a lot of mana. Uh, it's cool for... Uh, mill decks, because not only does it hit 5, and potentially 10, but you probably aren't going to get to this point, but you can also hit, like, your own Dream Twists, and, like, Alchemies and Think Twices off of it. So, I don't know. It, it's uncommon for a reason. Like, you don't want to see a bunch of these, but eh, it's it's fine. Not, not really of note. Counter Lash, one of my favorite flavor texts of all time. And the set isn't even out yet. It's pretty badass. Uh, I don't think it's going to see a lot of play. Um, six mana for a counter spell. The only two that I've ever really seen played are like Draining Welk as a one of to Teachings 4, and Overwhelming Intellect as a one of. And that thing like drew six cards when you when you played it. This thing just lets you play a creature for free. Uh, I don't really see this being uh, all that good, but it's cool. It's a cool card. Here's a one-sided optional hive mind, so you can't kill people with it. But I like the effect. It's uh, it reminds me of uh, what's that card? I God, I forgot it yesterday too. I had to have the chat help me out. What's the card where you like enchant them? And then, you don't draw for your turn, but whenever they draw a card, you draw a card? Was it Psychic Possession? Is that the name of the card? Something like that. I like that card a lot, and this reminds me a lot of that card. So, that's cool. Divination Reprint, happy about that. Dungeon Geists. Alright, so this is basically a Necrotal in the way it, it functions. Um... Except it's even better because it doesn't redo their comes into play abilities. And if you. If they kill this on their turn, their guy is still tapped. Like, if they were to kill this. Or I'm sorry, if they were to kill a Fiend Hunter with a. Uh, what's it called? What's the sorcery removal spell? Whatever. Any sorcery removal spell. Then, 
Oh yeah, sorry. The chat said I I I kept, I kept saying uh, <laughs> Necrotal. I meant Faceless Butcher. Thank you, chat. Uh, Faceless Butcher or Fiend Hunter. So if they were to kill this thing on their turn, their guy still can't block on your next attack. So it's even better than a Fiend Hunter, and it doesn't trigger their comes into play abilities again, or their leaves play abilities. Plus. It's a 3-3 flyer for 4. Like, that's absolutely insane. This guy, I'm very happy he's a rare, because if he was uncommon, he'd be way too good. Uh, at rare, I mean, he's still awesomely good, but he's a value card. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the rares, the good rares, be value cards. Um, I talked about this a bunch yesterday, where... I don't want, I don't like when the bombs of a set are completely unbeatable, like Drana or Olivia. Um, the, the thing that I r really ranted on was dragons, uh, and by dragons I mean like giant flyers for a bunch of mana. The, in the past, dragons were premium limited cards, like absolute bombs, premium picks, and that was all they were, were dragons. Nowadays, every dragon, in addition to being a dragon, also wins the game. Like, Balefire Dragon, right? The thing, just being a giant flyer isn't enough. It needs to absolutely destroy everything. Horde Smelter Dragon, in addition to being, like, practically unkillable in the format and a giant flyer, it also can vindicate and that increases its clock. Like, Drana, same thing. The cards are absurd. And it's absurd to think that you need dragons to do that. Like... Uh, somebody asked the R&D guys, uh, one of the R&D guys, I, I don't want to name names, about why that was the case, why dragons won the game, in addition to being dragons, and they were like, oh, well, you know, from a design perspective, we really want to push dragons, we want to make dragons really cool, we want people to play with them, and it's just like, well, yeah, but they are already cool and powerful and people are going to play with them because they're freaking dragons. <laughs> like, they're awesome. You don't need to make them also win the game. I don't know. I digress. I like these rares that are really, really, really good, but they ha they're they good because they have value, not because they just instantly win the game. This is a ground dragon, uh, the, the mind crusher. Mills five, five five is huge in this format, and when it dies, it mills five more, which probably means that you're gonna win because either you're decking them, or more likely you're just milling yourself for value. Uh, and like, a, as if a five five wasn't hard enough to deal with, the fact that it once you finally deal with it, it comes back as a seven seven is pretty insane. This is uh, one of the cards that makes me happy. There's a lot of uh, claustrophobia, bonds of faith, uh, grip tied, sound departure, you know, type cards. Uh, otherwise, this would be really hard to deal with, with just straight up removal or, you know, trading up, like double blocking and trying to trade up. Grip tied, super awesome. Between grip tied and sound departure and grasp. It's pretty hard for somebody to, like, just suit up a creature with auras, unless it's Invisible Stalker. And, I don't know, I like the fact that it's an instant. Instant, uh, instant speed removal and, like, tricks and stuff like that have been sort of phased out of existence, almost. Uh, and I'm really happy to see 
that uh, blue gets its tricky instantness back. And it doesn't have to be undercosted. It can be just repel. You you don't have to you don't have to make it super like aggressively costed. But give the game give the game some play. You know, make let players have instants. Room binder. I compared it to uh, Crypt. What's that card called? Crypt Keeper. Crypt Champion. Crypt Reaper. Crypt, is it Crypt Reaper? Someone in the chat, help me out. Yeah, Crypt Reaper. Cemetery Reaper. Thank you, Cemetery Reaper. Um, he is pretty awesome. And while being a bomb, again, it's a manageable bomb. This is a card that, well, it's a 2-2 two, two for 4, so they can just kill it. You can have not enough gas for it. Like, you, you it, it needs fuel, it's not just make 2-2s. Two and... Yeah, it's it's awesome design, and even though it's a bomb, it's manageable and raceable, and I, I like that card. Headless Scab, a 3-6, uh, comes into play tapped. This is the type of card that I like a lot. Uh, I don't know how many enablers there are going to be for these types of cards in this set, like how many armor scabs there's going to be, but... I definitely like this guy a lot more than Makeshift Muller. That one mana is a huge difference. And I think that uh, the Goliath is horrible. This Drake is obviously really good, but I like this card a lot. Six toughness is absolutely huge, but like you can't always play it on turn three, and it can't block the first turn. This is like a cool design. I like it a lot. Increasing Confusion. I talked about this card a lot, and I basically just kept changing my mind on it. Um, it's like a weird fireball. It's like a fireball with... Uh, it's a fireball that doesn't kill creatures. And has Echo. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's weird, because if you open this, or get past this, you probably want to take it but it's so weird like its effect on your deck is so strange that uh, it, it's it's going to be cool to see how drafts progress once the format gets established that start with increasing confusion because like whether you target yourself or target them whether you try and mill or go burning vengeance there's there's a lot of options here, and uh, it, it's going to be cool to see how this sort of fits in with the rest of the set. Mystic Retrieval, awesome card. The flashback being red is interesting, because you can't just jam it into the spider spawning deck. Uh, you have to actually go through the effort to pay the mana, but it goes straight into Burning Vengeance, or even just blue-red control with, like, a couple brimstone volleys. If you're, like, lucky enough to get some removable spells, then it's just insane. The, uh, Sentinels of Glen Alondra or whatever. Functional reprint. It's a bird instead of a fairy. Uh, Flash is awesome. I'm glad blue gets to do things at instant speed. Definitely gonna be annoying to play around this one. Especially because there's so many, like... 2-2 two, two, and 2-1 two, flyers, that uh, a 2-3 is pretty scary. Nibbles of the Breath, these things, this word means they're a tapper, basically, in some fashion. A 2-1 flyer, pretty aggressively costed, and it taps or untaps. Uh, tappers are always awesome. Like, everyone always underrates tappers. Uh when talking about them, but when drafting, they're just, like, they realize how good <laughs> they really are. At least that's my experience. Um, this one, it, it's got an, a cool, like, awkward tension to it in that 
you kind of want to be attacking with it because it's so aggressively costed and it's a relatively high powered uh, evasion creature, you know, two power two power two evasive power for three mana. So you want to be attacking with it, but at the same time the tapping is also really good. Um, it's blue, not colorless, which is relevant, and it taps anything which is relevant. But what I really want to talk about, the important distinction, is untap. I think that the uh, plausibility to untap is awesome. I think this option of being available to the player makes the games so much more interesting and so much more... I don't know, the, the play seems so much more dynamic when you have that one extra word in the text box, well I guess two, uh, because not only can you sort of change your card evaluations of things that can take advantage of the untap, like the juggernaut, uh, but also you can do more creative, you can take more creative lines in that you can sort of get away with attacks that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get away with and you can sort of trick people into like running into anything you know running into your onboard tricks not not that they would just suicide their guy but that like having this thing up makes their attacks really really hard uh, if they have, like, multiple guys, you can untap your one guy that's bigger and hold them off while still attacking. Because that's a dynamic that happens in Limited a lot, where, like, you'll have, say, a 4-4, four -four, and they have, like, a bunch of 2-2s. Two and you attack, they don't want to trade two cards for it. But if you just have a tapper, you can only tap one of the 2-2s, two -two and then they get to attack with all their guys. But if you have this guy, you can just not tap, and then if they attack with all their guys, you untap your 4-4 four -four and eat a creature? That's significantly different than just tapping it. So... Uh, I like that uh, the untap is an option here. Relentless Scabs, 4-4 um, four, four for 5 is really big for blue, pretty big in this format in general, and it comes back as a 5-5, five, five. is awesome. Yet another card that needs a creature in the yard, so uh, definitely something to look out for. And this one's uncommon, the other one was common, uh, to look see how many enablers there are going to be in uh, in this set. Saving Grasp, without damage stacking, I don't like this card that much. You can do cool things with it, uh, with, uh, comes into play abilities, like you can Fiend Hunt or something, and then with the trigger on, bounce it, but in general, it's just going to be used to, like, save your guys from removal, which is not really worthwhile. Uh, because, like, it's a corner case, it's like a weird situation where, like, you have mana up, this card in hand, a creature worth saving, and they kill it, and you're not behind anyway from the tempo loss, uh, that you do to yourself, because you have to recast it, and, yeah, it's an interesting card to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be, end up being that great, but, um, oh yeah, thank you. Put in Duchess in the in the chat. One thing that I pointed out yesterday is it says third creature you own, not you control. So if they mind control your guy or something, you actually get to bounce it, which is pretty cool. Um, or if you like play a guy that l gives them a counter or something like that, or, or gives them a token, then uh, you're allowed to bounce it because you own it. Screeching scab. This is an awesome card. Blue needed two drops to be honest. Uh, like, Stitcher's Apprentice cannot block well, and is a little awkward. Invisible Stalker doesn't block well. Obviously, it's an insane card, but for different reasons. And it's just... It's just hard for for Blue without, uh, you know, a Goblin Piker. Um, and now, not only do you get a Goblin Piker, but it's like a mini Armored Scab, and that's awesome. The these are the uh, types of enablers that are needed, and while it is only two, that that is enough that you know you're gonna hit a creature a little under 50% of the time. You're gonna hit a creature like 43% of the time in your average limited deck, 
and that means that uh, that percentage of time you'll be able to play your three six on three or your stitchers or your stitch drake or whatever. Secrets of the Dead. This is like the blue burning vengeance. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday in the chat, uh, I was like, oh, it's like a it's like a burning vengeance, but you draw a card, and he said more like learning vengeance, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna call this card learning vengeance now. Street Geist, uh, pretty much unplayable unless you're trying to mill them. Milling somebody is not good with all this, all these graveyard interactions in uh, these sets. And a 1-1 one, one flyer for two is generally not worth it. This is how mind controls should be done at Uncommon. If this was just mind control, I'd be quite upset. Uh, it's just too powerful and too annoying of an effect to have regularly crop up in limited games. But if you have to pay and wait a turn and then also get it through, that is a very, very worthwhile thing. Plus, you can just cast it and wait. So it's not like it's strictly worse. Because that would be stupid if they printed it at 6 mana or whatever. Like, mind control at 6 mana. Like, that's just lazy design. This is actually awesome and interesting design. I really, really like uh, like this card a lot. And I like the, the flip cards that that are like this. Where, like, this guy's coming to seize her soul and then she's going crazy and all the candles are going out. That's really cool. I'm sure the flavor text is awesome, but I'm not going to read it. Stormbound guys, this card is way super awesome. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three flyer is huge, and it can only block creatures with flying is whatever. This card still still going to be really good, uh, especially because blue does have a decent amount of like horn turtles and stuff. So, this is, I like this card. I don't know, I said a lot about it yesterday, and I can't remember what I said about it yesterday, but <laughs> it's cool, it's really good, it's going to be uh, an interesting card. Like Cloud Elemental, in the last core set, everyone thought it was incredible when it came out, but then, oh, my foot fell asleep. But then as the set progressed, people realized that it like wasn't actually that good. And then towards the end of the season, people thought it was really, really good. Just because the shifts in the metagame of the limited environment. It was pretty interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see how Storm, Storm Mountain Guys plays out. But I'm pretty sure it's just awesome. Thought Scour. This is one of the few cards that I saw the preview of before doing my review series. And this card is freaking awesome. Mental Note Upgrade, it's super cool and has a lot of applications, which I'm going to talk about right now. First of all, it let, let's just talk about mm, the targeting yourself side of it first. All right, This is like a total free roll in Burning Vengeance decks, and... Or not just Burning Vengeance decks, but Flashback decks. And then, uh, say in Legacy, you can use it to get rid of Brainstorm cards or Delver cards. And it's really super awesome. The fact that you can target them is so cool to me. A couple examples. The biggest one I thought of was, imagine you're playing bug in Legacy. And you thought sees them. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? That just seems to always happen when whenever a bug player plays a duress effect. They brainstorm in response and hide their best cards. It's so 
frustrating to thought seize them and have them brainstorm and then you see their hand and it's just like a bunch of mediocre cards that all do the same thing so your thought seize is basically a blank now imagine that after thought seizing them and them hiding their two best cards from you you thought scour them how awesome is that I'm just just like thinking about it gets me all gets me all happy inside then you know how many delvers there are in in legacy and in standard and in modern and I'm sure there would be an extended if that were a thing. If they re if they flip to their Delver, and it's some awesome card, like if they flip a leak to their Delver or something, then you could just tag it before they draw it. And the same goes for your own Delver. If you reveal or if you look at a land that like you know that you obviously don't need, you could Thought Scour to get rid of it, and then draw for turn really really cool it's got way more applications than that this is a card that uh, a lot of really smart people are going to toy around with I'm pretty sure and I already mentioned this but it's interaction with like desperate ravings to think twice it's just awesome tower geist Ooh, it's like seagate oracle oh yeah that was I think this card was like the last card I did yesterday, so the, all of these cards I've not seen before. Terrorgeist is like a flying Seagate Oracle. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot for limited. I don't think it's going to make the break into constructed. The only reason I mention constructed here is because uh, Seagate Oracle saw a decent amount of play, but it, it, the fact that it the Seagate Oracle A blocked uh, pretty well and pretty early, and B cost three, so it filled a hole in birthing pod decks. Uh, are the reasons that it played, uh, that it saw play and constructed. So I don't think that it'll make the break to constructed, but it's really cool and limited. I like, I like all sorts of. Oh wow, I was like two cards away last time. God, that sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that that's that's cool. God damn it, that sucks. They end on T for blue, don't they end on T for white also? Yeah. Watsy forgot to mention the rest of the alphabet. Alright guys. That's my that's my blue review. <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh alright, we're gonna draft and then we're gonna do black a little later. And also I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. So in fact you might be watching this on YouTube right now. Greetings from the past. We're uh I did blue yesterday, we're doing black later today, yeah, we're going to get through it all, hopefully before the pre-release this weekend.